So I can't help myself but to notice these weird cars that are unlocked. So in this case, since the previous video is so short, I'm going to be looking at this Mercedes Sprinter 3500XD that's also a limo. So it was converted by that same company uh, that I already filmed, you know, the previous limos. And you can kind of see, so it's black. It's black on black. It's got... I'm surprised how much, you know, this cheap plastic it has, but, you know, I guess it's it's what's inside that counts. So first of all, look how tall this thing is. Holy moly. And then it's interesting that on these printers, the to put the fuel in, you have to have the door open. Otherwise, this thing is kind of serves as a lock. So right up here, so a lot of cheap plastic. Obviously, this is not, you know, made originally for a limo duty, but you have these conversion steps. You have actually two steps to get in here. And then you're in the business end of this limo. So it has all the different books and materials. I'm not going to touch that. Uh, it has a nice big storage area up there with some um, power points. You have a manual seat. That's weird. It says, don't forget your key. Very, very basic looking gauges. Actually, extremely basic looking gauges. Uh, but, oh, there you go. So manual seat moves back. Come on, people. Is this really necessary? Is this really necessary? These pedal shifters. What is this van going to do? Oh, but anyway, you have, what is this? This is your column shift column shift transmission it's cheap it's plastic it's an afterthought but who cares right it's a mercedes so you have your basic controls right here which look kind of nice it's touch sensitive stuff but you have your cruise control your phone system so they stole this out of a more and then this is like a trackpad with a push button so it does obviously something up there so very basic spinometer here these are nice these are taken from a more classic from a more serious mercedes really that's your volume so it's got all the basic stuff for this very small display here you have some sort of uh array of blank buttons compared uh, combined with you know some display with your fan speed and your temperature this is probably you know made uh after the fact this little console although I don't know how it opens and whether or not it opens at all. It looks like a big box. So, yeah, I guess I guess this is this doesn't open because there's no obvious spot to open it. Although it does look like there's a hinge here. Hmm. All right, please stand by. There you go. So it actually, it's a magnet. <laughs> I was looking for a latch, but you just pull on it and it opens up. So that's nice. This doesn't open though. So it's a nice big storage. You can put a cooler in there. These seats are probably, um, you know, they're not standard, obviously. So you can see the logo of that company that made it. Ooh, look at this. Emergency brake is nice and giant. And then it does have an engine start stop. Oh my God, look at all these blank switches. What are these for? Now from up here, you can see you can change a lot of different stuff, which obviously that's put in after the fact. And it's like a glass material, master power. So that's, I guess, to cut off power if need to be for like if customers going beast mode back there. I uh, got a nice storage here. You have all your basic light control and stuff. So, all right, let's look in the back because that's where the party's at. And actually right here, I'm surprised there's no partition here. You can see, like, this this stuff, this shelf does not fold down. That's weird. But then this armrest does. Okay. Oh, yeah, let's look. Let's look in the back, because I think that's where... That's where the party is, literally. Now, this thing is giant. Look at this. This is the trunk area. Now, obviously, there's lights back here, but this this seating area is totally isolated. So I want to say because this smells like wood or at least laminate. Wow, they really went all out. And this is probably suspension components right here. Wow, so they really isolated this. 
trunk, which is obviously huge, from um, from the seating compartment. So going up to this ginormous door, let's look here. So the step deploys. And look what we have here. A nice picnic table. A giant ceiling, all encased in wood. You have these shades, almost like, yeah, look at this. They're made out of this nice rubbery material so they don't rip. You have USB ports. You know, you can get wasted right up here with these cup holders. How many seats? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow. And then I think these do actually recline or do something. Yeah, I'm not sure what they do, but let's see. If I sit here pressing this lever. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a recliner. So I have to hold it. Yeah, wow. Look how sweet these seats are. I'm surprised there's no partition, though. That's weird. You have these controls, same like we saw before, same thing. You have storage, net, right up here. You have a like an emergency exit slash sky ceiling type of deal, sky view ceiling of these nice wood lacquered armrest and air vents, which I wish they were blowing hot cold AC right now. Look, you got these handles like on a city bus. And also right here, climate control. Wow, I'm, st I'm standing and I still have room. I have, oh wow, this is like glass or something or at least plexiglass. Well, this is nice. This is definitely nice. Have my steps here, very nice. And then when I pull, they will close. And then this will deploy back. Look at that. So obviously all of these fancy features, they were not standard on this Mercedes. So, wow. This is this is the living, living the dream type of deal. All right, everybody, I hope you uh, enjoyed this. This is a very wide range of vehicles I just showed you, but hey, I'm having fun. I hope so are you. Thanks a lot.